and we are back with another episode of the Hockey Princess podcast. I'm your host, the Hockey Princess. We got Chris, the old guy, once again. Um, just as a reminder, make sure to hit that like and subscribe on either Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or YouTube, however you watch or listen to us on a weekly basis. If you're going to a Rockford playoff game or going to a game next season, please wait for the whistle. Do not get up while the puck's in play. Do not try to get back to your seat while the game is in play. Uh, let's get into it. Blackhawk hockey, it's officially done for the season. We're done until October. We don't have to think about how bad this season was anymore. Um, and I'm a little excited about that because it was pretty bad. But according to Kyle, this is just unacceptable. So we're going to get much better next year. That's what Kyle said. And I found out how you can tell Kyle is full of shit. Yes, his mouth is open. Good one, my woman. No, basically, if you watch his presser, he'll sit there and spew his bullshit, and then he'll say, with that being said, you know, it's not like these things can be done overnight. So you get five minutes of BS, and then, with that being said, and I don't know, but that man had to have spent a good hour on his hair. Holy cow, he had the whole, I don't care, but you could tell it's moosed everywhere look and completely straight on the sides. Dude, huh? A little more hockey work, a little less on the hair also. Um, but well, he's Kyle not a hockey stated, guy, we know this. Yes, but Kyle stated being completely at the bottom is unacceptable. It won't happen next year. I don't know how it's not going to happen because what Kyle forgot about this whole plan is all those other teams that are bad, they're all getting better also. Columbus, getting a lot better. Anaheim, getting a lot better. Anaheim's loaded. St. Louis, getting a lot better. Minnesota, getting a lot better. And now they're not, they don't have the cap restraints of Parisi and Suter. So he says he's going to start to get to work. We'll see what that actually means. Yeah, a lot of mixed bag reactions. We had a lot of positivity from the post-season uh, exit interviews. Uh, you got Alex Vlasic saying that he wants to be here as long as he can. Um, so the clock starts now, Kyle. Not really, because... They can't sign him right now, but it'll start pretty soon, Kyle. Extend him. Extend him for as long as he wants. You have a guy, a quality star athlete, wanting to hop on this Kool-Aid train that you've got. Extend him. Extend him to also make your NHL all-star, Seth Jones, happy. Because right now, Seth is not too happy with what you're doing. He's happy that he has a friend to play with. So extend him for Vlasic and ex extend him to make Seth happy. Yeah, um, Seth, uh, you know, I don't know if Seth is just looking to get out of here. You don't uh, blame him. He goes from Columbus to here. I don't blame him for wanting to be at, you know, gosh, even a midfield team. Yeah, I, I he's got to figure that, you know, if you talk against Kyle, um, you know, that usually means the door. But um, Which is why we know, will not see the number 90 come next season. Yeah, I, I enjoyed the fact that me and Seth were like this on said problems with this team is you can't expect complete effort from people who know they're not really wanted here. Yeah. So when you sign people to two-year contracts, they know they're not really wanted here. They'll come and get the money, but they're not going to go the extra mile. So that's what Seth was talking about on his end-of-the-game presser. It's time to start to build. Obviously, you know, Kyle heard a little bit of that because he also agreed with him. So, but uh, as far as the pickle, I can't imagine – he has the balls to sign him long-term. I think you'll get a bridge deal. Two years at about three, 
maybe three and a quarter. If the pickle continues to play like he is, then you pay him. Then you're going to have to pay him even more. But I also think that the pickle might be playing with core next year. I have a feeling if EDM or Allen come in, they will be Seth Jones' assignment again. All right. So, I won't hate it. Yeah. Again, uh, I would like to see both of them left in Rockford. I don't think KD's that much different than the last guy where he wants to start showing off his new pieces. So, and uh, EDM might be ready anyways. So, That's but I have a feeling he's going to end up playing with Seth. I, th I I don't know just from like the couple of games that he was up here. And I think even if he does start, if EDM does start the season up here, I think you can't judge if he's ready within the first like, you know, game or two, if he gets brought, if he starts up here at the beginning of the season, it takes time to see if they're ready, just like we did with core this year. Um, but if he's ready, then by all means, let the kid play. Um, but if he's not, it's not a bad thing to put him back down in Rockford, especially because Rockford just got way more entertaining today. Yeah. And, um, again, uh, Katie has stated that it'll be open competition, which is another lie because it's not going to be open competition. Um, you're not sending down veteran players that won't clear waivers. You are sending down players that are waiver exempt. That's not going to change next year. Right. So, but yes, Rockford has gotten better. I I kind of interrupted your segue, so take it away, Hockey Princess. It's okay, because I'm going to talk about this probably every week, um, especially if he plays on Saturday. So Rockford got two new additions today. Uh, you got Alex Ferran from the Sudbury Wolves on an ATO, uh, which is an amateur tryout uh, with the Rockford Ice Hogs. And the day we've been waiting for, the moment that I have been waiting for since prospect camp of 2022. Guys, Samuel Savoie is your newest Rockford Ice Hogs edition, has been reassigned to Rockford. Um, as we've stated, you know, the difference between Ferrand and Savoie in terms of being on an ATO and being uh, not just has to do with age. Um, Savoie is a little bit older than Ferrand. He's on his entry level. It's just Savoie is a little bit older, so that's why it's a little bit different. Um, but Savoie is coming to Rockford, and it's going to be great. Um, you know, we're fingers crossed that the last piece, Gavin Hayes, comes shortly, maybe, uh, because the Greyhounds just got knocked out of the OHL playoffs uh, by the Saginaw Spirit. So hopefully that's the final piece. Um, but, guys, it's getting better. It's getting better. The agitator is coming. Rockford's going to be fun. It's not just going to be Colton Doc wanting to fight everybody or just annoy everybody. Because guess what? The other annoying guy is coming. I can't wait. I cannot wait. So what you're saying is you can't wait. I'm so excited. Hardly wait. <laughs> For those of you there that was so many years where, I mean, it's not, not that it was boring but it was kind of boring to watch Rockford. It was very much a lot of veterans and the Lucas Reichel show down in Rockford. There wasn't really like a roster to cheer for. And now it's just getting a lot more entertaining. Like I said last week, can't promise it's good. Can't promise it's bad, but I can promise it'll at least be more fun to watch. Exactly. And, uh, you know, uh, hopefully he plays. Um, you know, people are saying play. People are saying, why would you want to mess with the, you know, the Ice Hogs who have been playing well? And it's just because, well, why wouldn't you play these kids? This is the future, right? <laughs> What's the point of watching? Right. Well, and I and I do think, you know, yes, the Ice Hogs have been pretty hot. The 
end bit of the regular season. Um, and they did win their last right, uh, like season game against the Chicago Wolves, uh, three to two win over them this past weekend. Um, but they're still good with letting these kids play. It's not like we've had the whole season of, you know, great playing and then we're letting these kids play and it's starting to slide. Um, you know, they're not, you know, putting up as much points as Senny, Hardman, Tepley guys who have been down there for a while, but that's what we expected. You know, you're going to see a lot of points from the veterans, but they're not completely whiffing their first couple of games down there. So why not let them play? And if they do, you know, really fumble it, then guess what? Rockford's got a lot of guys on the roster. You put them up in the press booth or whatever in a suit and say, watch, you'll play in October. Yeah. It's, uh, that's, that'll be a little bit interesting. I'm trying to uh, figure out. You would know this more than I would, Hockey Princess, but exactly where, if you're going to have your Savoie in the lineup, I mean, who does he come in for? Um, let me see. Sorry, now we got some quiet time. Um, I mean, you're putting him in your bottom six. I really would be shocked if he's in the top six. I don't think he's in the top six, and I don't think he's in the top six for Rockford in general because that's not the role that he's pushing. Uh, you put him on the fourth line and you take out Brandon Baddock. Or you take out, you keep still keep him on the fourth line, and you take out Logan Nyhoff. Um, probably Nyhoff more than Baddock, just because Nyhoff is uh, on the similar sense where he's not like a face puncher, a bit more of an agitator, a bit more Marshandi, you know, trying to get in your face and annoy you until you make a mistake. Whereas Baddock is your quintessential perfect guy you know somebody takes a hit at Reichel Baddock's gonna go defend and like take out your star player um so I would say probably somewhere on the fourth line you take out Nyhoff unfortunately yeah and I don't think that kills you with anything I know their last game they they rested a good amount of their players correct yes because the third line mattered yeah, because your third line was Ludwinski, Misiak, and Lardis. So you were resting a bit. I mean, that's the thing. You put in all three new kids on the third line, and you're still winning. It's not like you're letting these kids play and you're getting smoked. Yeah. And, um, I mean, there might not be that much of a spot. Uh, I mean... Pitlick didn't play. He's going to play for you. Yeah. I don't know if Stanford is still hurt, but yeah. he's going to be in the lineup. Uh, Gust isn't hurt, is he? Or Gust is hurt? I'm... No, Gust isn't hurt. Gutman is. Okay. So you still have Gust and Sini who weren't. So, yeah, I, I understand that it might be difficult to find a spot for some of these guys. Yeah, but I'd say if you're trying to make Savoie room, I would say you put Nyhoff in. I don't think that you play Alex Ferrand. Um, I think, but also, who knows? I didn't think that they were going to let Lardis play as quickly as they did. Um, but I definitely think Nyhoff's the one that you take out if you're trying to make room for Savoie. Um, and yes, Gus is still there. Gutman isn't. And I think essentially right now, Reichel has just been kind of not a complete even swap, but with Reichel being sent down from Chicago, he's has the ability to eat that many minutes kind of comparable to what Gutman was doing during a game. Okay. So fun stuff in Rockford. I'm excited. I've never been more bummed that I'm going to go see baseball game one when Savoie could be playing, but it's okay. There'll be plenty of other times to go see. What? I'm not I'm not saying anything because then you'll just feel bad. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. 
Um, Crusty old guy is unsure if he is going. Okay. You know. I mean, if you do go, I would just ask for a picture if he dresses so I can see him in the Rockford jersey. I can dig it. Um, but yeah. Uh, so that's kind of prospect Rockford world. Um, like we said, Chicago is done for the season. We'll start talking about them more, you know, closer to the draft and like we did during last off season. Um, but there's still a lot of playoff hockey and we got some brackets. Look at our incredible graphics we've got going on here, people. <laughs> Look at this. So, um, and currently there are games going on that we're like trying to pay attention to. I don't know the current, do we, do you have the current score for the battle of Florida? I can, I can pull it up real quick. Um, so we'll start. It with is the, still two to two. We'll start with the battle of Florida. Um, Crusty old guy and I predict or did our little brackets. We put them up on Twitter earlier this week. Uh, but Crusty, you got Tampa taking it over Florida. I do. I want Florida to win. Um, but I went with Tampa. I just uh Vasilevsky, when everything starts to matter, he just seems to get it done. And I just also thought Florida would start to read uh, enough of their own press clippings. Mm -hmm. I will say though, did you see the Bob save from tonight? Uh, I saw one of the Bob saves. The, the Bob save. You're gonna have to watch it. I oh my goodness. Um, well, I have Florida because Tomo Rutu, enough said. <laughs> enough said. <laughs> Uh, we both have Boston going over Toronto. Uh, currently, that series is tied one to one. Um, thoughts? Also, um, Rylander being out now for Toronto. Uh, yeah, and uh, that that hurts them a little bit. Um, you know, Toronto got the split in Boston, which is what you're looking for. But again, I don't think the bees are all that scared about going to Toronto. In playing the Maple Leafs, I don't think, I don't think there's a team in the NHL that is intimidated by that building. Um, what I mean by that is they know if they get up by one or two goals, that whole place gets quiet and they get scared. Um, so there's not much of a home ice advantage for the Maple Leafs. Um, so, but we'll see. Um, Toronto played a darn good game in game two and, you know, evened it up. So, yeah. All right. Next one, uh, Rangers versus Washington. We both have the Rangers winning currently. They're winning the series two to nothing. Um, Rangers are going to take it unless the Cavs absolutely surprise the heck out of everybody. Um, I figure, I mean, Rangers are just looking so dominant you know, throughout this entire season and now with the first couple of games into the postseason. Um, and if Shesterkin's still being Shesterkin at the end of the day, I see Rangers taking it in the first round. Yeah, at the, at the end of the day, Washington doesn't have near enough talent. Um, it, it just – it is what it is. Uh, they played them relatively tough tonight and still lost 4-3. to three. It's just they – there's too much, too much of a gap. Yeah. To be made up just by a goaltender or by hard work. It's just they don't have enough. So that would be over quickly. Yeah. Um, and our last Eastern Conference one, the one that's gotten everybody so excited, uh, that is Carolina versus the New York Islanders. Um, we both have Carolina taking it in our brackets. Um, I think last night's game just made me so jealous and made me miss playoff hockey because watching that building in the span of like 15 seconds i know the goals were scored nine seconds but just watching and hearing it clearly through the tv i was just like man i miss playoff hockey um carolina's out for blood and i love that for them um just because they're usually one of the more dominant teams in the postseason and then they get to like the second or third round, and then they let the foot off the gas, 
or they're just really injury prone. I know Shvech, uh, Svechnikov was out last year for the postseason, and I'm unsure about the year before. Um, but it seems like things are just going right for them this year and going into the postseason. So I really do hope that they make quite a run. Um, and just last night's game was so entertaining. Yeah, it uh, really was. Um, you know, uh, Roy Roy went with his big coaching move, so he put Vlarmov in net. Yeah, and what? Yeah, Vlarmov was in net. I know. I I don't understand that. I I, I don't understand that either. I haven't um, read anything. Um, as far as if they called him out on that or whatever, it looked like it was a beautiful thing until all of a sudden with five minutes to go in the third period, it wasn't. Um, but again, Carolina can strike from anywhere. They have so much talent and all it took was one little oopsie and the floodgates kind of opened. That's well. Okay, for those who are unfamiliar with the New York Islanders, their goaltenders are Varlamov and uh, Sorokin. And Sorokin is, I would say, arguably one of the best goalies in the NHL currently. So it just threw everybody kind of for a loop that Roy was putting Varlamov in net. Um, nothing really wrong with Varlamov. He's a bit more veteran than Sorokin. He's not awful, but Sorokin's just really, really good. Yeah, I, I didn't quite understand the uh, maneuver. Now you've got two goaltenders that are going like this at you and questioning you. So, again, um, you know, the Islanders can really only play one way, and uh, Carolina can play any game. They can play a fast game. They can play a nice stingy game. Uh, they can play a hard forechecking game. They can play a physical game. It really doesn't matter. They've they've got there's talent top to bottom on that team. So, and Anderson looks like he's playing well. So, you know, I think uh, I think this one will be over with quickly. Also, yeah, I'm very excited for it. Uh, and then, so after you've got Tampa and Boston fighting each other in the second with Tampa going past Boston, um, you just think Vasilevsky is going to be Vasilevsky? Yeah, I just, well, Tampa's still got a lot of talent. Yeah. And Brandon Hall. Kucherov's one of the top players. Stamkos is still playing at an unbelievable level. You've got Brandon Hagel. You've got Brandon Point. You got Tanner Janot if he ever really gets to doing things. Um, you know, they're a little light on the back end. I don't think the big guy, the Shvestikov or whatever, is coming back during the playoff, but I'm not positive of that. Um, you mean Sergachev? Yeah. You know, you know what I meant. Yeah. So, but I just think that. I think they're still due for one more good run in them. So, um, well, I had Florida versus Boston, um, and I would just really like to see a rematch of last year and Florida win again. Um, because Tom Rutu, enough said. <laughs> uh huh. To be fair, that is my reasoning for most of the Eastern Conference. Um, is just my loyalty um and then so rangers versus carolina you've got rangers going forward yep i've got the rangers going forward um you know just like the florida tampa series in the first round it is much watch tv that second round matchup of the rangers and the hurricanes is much watch TV. Both of them are four lines deep. They can play any style. It should be unbelievable. Yeah, I'm very excited. Um, I had the Carolina Hurricanes going past. Uh, 
Well, that's because you buy, you know, you go through this a lot with your heart. I do. I do. I go through it with my heart. But I also, you know, New York's hot now. But there's a but. There's always a, you know, last year's postseason should not be completely forgotten. You can have all of the talent. You can be for, you can be and have depth. But if you just, you know, use too much gas in the first round and there's not really enough to go to the next one, um, you know, there's definitely very skilled teams going into the playoffs that don't make a long run because either they've, you know, used too much gas or whatever during the regular season and then it just tapers off suddenly during the postseason or they just really, really struggle. Um, so, yeah, yeah, and I mean, at the end of the day, Carolina's as deep and as talented as them. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. I mean, Svechnikov is on your third line. Yeah, I, I mean, that is a unbelievable power forward. Yeah, who's on your third line? So, I they've got just as much talent as New York and everything else. So, again, I hope Carolina wins. Um, and then for me, Florida versus Carolina, um, I went with Florida cause I go with my heart, like Christy said, but I also think that that is such an even matchup in terms of depth, in terms of skill, in terms of Florida can also play various different types of games. Um, they're not you know, just a one dimensional team. And we, we saw this this year in the regular season. We saw it last year in the postseason. They should not be count out of the fight. Um, but I think also that can go either way. Carolina could smoke Florida. Um, I think it's a more evenly matched m- matchup if they do play uh, in the Eastern conference finals, but I just went with Florida. Um, so, yeah, uh, I, went, I went with the Rangers. Rangers so. versus the Lightning. Yep, and I went Rangers because you went Lightning. I went Lightning. You went Lightning. No, I went, no, 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 no. Oh, am I checking the receipts? Am I checking the receipts? I don't care well, if you check the receipts. I'm not going Lightning. I'm going Rangers. Hmm. Hmm. I know the text never lies, but I don't care. I so think it was scratch Rangers. mine off and put the Rangers. Rangers, you got Rangers going to the cup? Yes. All right. I might have put Tampa, but either way, I know I've got the Rangers. You want to switch? I don't have Vegas. Nah, we're getting to that in a second. Um, all right, Western Conference. Okay. We got Dallas versus Vegas. Um, currently, Dallas is up one to nothing in that series. No. Vegas, no, Vegas is up. up one to nothing. I knew that, and, you know, words are difficult. Um, Vegas is up currently one to nothing in that series. Um, we both have Dallas coming out of that series. Um, yes. I went to my text, and I did tell you the Rangers. Yeah. Yeah. I said, then Rangers Tampa, then Rangers Dallas. Okay. So obviously your graphics department made a mistake, but continue on, Hockey Princess. Dallas versus Vegas. Yeah, this is where you don't listen to Krusty Old Guy, because, you know, I have, uh, you know, Dallas going all the way, and uh, they lost their first game. which is okay. Which is yeah, okay. it's okay. But uh, Vegas last night looked like the same exact Vegas team from last year. Um, they get a couple breaks and get a couple power plays. They send two men in front. They do a a low and a high screen. Two good tips by their new guy Thomas Hurdle. And then they just lock it down, and there's one line that that generates offense from then on out. 
and that's Jack Eichel. But every time that line, a line was on the ice, they dictated play. And then they just hold the lead. They're big. They're strong. Uh, they go over the salary cap. That's why they're big and strong. Well, yeah, but, you know, there's nothing you can do about that. That's just kind of the way it is. But um, Vegas looked like Vegas. Um, Dallas gave it a go. Ottinger still let in one, maybe two that he shouldn't have. I don't know if Dallas is tough enough. I'm hoping they are. Yeah. They can play faster than them. They've just got to make their defensemen pay a little bit. And game one, that didn't happen. No. Um, I also have Dallas going pretty far. Not as far as you, but pretty far. Um, and yeah. Hold on. Yeah. My woman, who do you have? Vegas. I. Uh, Dallas just did not look like Dallas in game one. So I'm hoping it was a fluke. It was, you know, and they'll correct at least part of it going into the next game. Um, Cause I can't imagine that, you know, it was all sunshines and rainbows in the locker room after losing game one. Cause that's a lot of veterans who have been in the postseason before who kind of know what needs to be done, get done to, you know, move past to win games in the postseason. Yep, that'll be a I, that'll be a great series to watch either way. But uh, yep. Dallas better get their act together. They do. Um, Winnipeg versus Colorado. Uh, we yep. both have Winnipeg. Uh, Winnipeg is up one to nothing in that series. Um, it was a weird game. You know, Connor Hellebuck led in six goals. The final score was seven to six. Um, very surprisingly, um, I think, uh, you know, Colorado has definitely tapered off a little bit at the end of the regular season, like we were talking last week and a couple of weeks before. They have the ability, if everybody is firing on all cylinders, to get things done and go deep into the playoffs. But it just doesn't seem like that's happening right now, um, where I think Winnipeg's at least just a little bit more stable in their performance. Not completely, but I think more than what Colorado's doing right now. But if, to if Colorado turns it on, it, it could easily be an even flip. Yeah, uh, the Jets are up one nothing tonight also. Um, and again, the first period, 16 shots for Colorado, 12 for Winnipeg. Um, Colorado completely outshot them like 40-something to 20-something uh, in game one. It comes down to Colorado's goaltender ain't good enough. And um, that's that. Yeah. There's no other way to look around. It, it's hard to win a best of seven when it's already in your head that, you know what, when push comes to sub, this guy ain't going to stop a puck. And they've tried to bring him along in the last month to and get him awesome. ready for this. And every time he just said, yeah, no, thank you. So right. I, rarely do you outscore people in a best of some series. Um, you've got to outplay them and you've got to stop the puck. So. Yeah, I definitely think the series, like you said, it comes down to goaltending. Uh, or Georgiev isn't getting it done for Colorado. Um, I'm a big fan of Connor Hellebuck over in Winnipeg. I don't think he's necessarily at the caliber of like your Vasilevsky, your Shesterkin, your Sorokins, but he is certainly up there in terms of skilled goaltenders in the NHL. I don't think he gets enough notoriety, um, maybe because he's playing in the middle of nowhere and has been playing in the middle of nowhere for a while. Um, but I definitely think he is one of the top guys on their team. Um, and I think it's going to come down to goaltending. Yeah. And that doesn't bode well for Colorado. So yeah. Um, next one, we've got Vancouver versus Nashville. Um, because I'm petty, I chose Vancouver um, because I want Nashville to start golfing as soon as possible. Yeah, I um, as much as it pains me, I, I did not see it that way. As um, 
I'm sure your listeners know I am a big time Ryan O'Reilly fan. And uh, Nashville has played lights out the last month and a half. And I just think that Vancouver has coasted a little bit. And uh, so I took the Preds. I did not watch game one, but I think uh, the Preds dominated play until towards the end, and then Vancouver all of a sudden went on a little tear. And the Preds are currently up one to nothing with your former Chicago Blackhawk, Anthony Bavillier. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so, I mean, that'll be an interesting series. Vancouver's got a lot of people that really haven't seen a ton of playoff time. The Preds have people that have seen some playoff time. Um, they've got a lot of kids, though. Um, so it'll depend on kind of what they do. They, you know, they've got high-end talent in Forsberg and O'Reilly and um, Yossi. Yeah. They've got just as good of goaltending. It'll be that bottom six. And will that bottom six be able to dictate physical play like they have for the last month and a half? So we'll see. Yeah. Um, last but certainly not least, uh, we got Edmonton versus Los Angeles. I would like to change my answer after watching game one. As much as it pains me because I don't think Corey Perry deserves to be in the playoffs whatsoever, uh, Edmonton's going to win this series if game one was any indicator. Um, you know, want to talk about how Toronto is not an intimidating barn to play in. Edmonton, just by the sound of game one, seems like one of the most intimidating barns to play in. Um, you know, I uh, Los Angeles let in two, and you could clearly hear the goalie chant immediately ready to go. Um, Edmonton's going to take it. McDavid's going to be McDavid at the end of the day, um, as much as it pains me to say it. Yeah, uh, yeah, that was a silly pick on your part. Um, you know, you go through the Kings lineup in their forward group, and it looks pretty good. Uh, Dubis and Byfield are your fourth line forwards. Pretty impressive. Um, but they don't have it defensively. That team is way too fast, even for uh the old guy back there playing defense. They just don't have enough. And, yes, they were geeked up for Talbot because, you know, Talbot played there a couple of years ago. So they let him hear it. They're hungry as a fan base. They also know they have a really good team. Um, and, again, if you're playing Edmonton, if you can't stay out of the penalty box, you're not going to win. And at the end of the day, they don't have enough defense. They don't have enough goaltending. Yeah. And they don't have the high-end talent that Edmonton does. That's for sure. So, yeah, from the looks of game one, it looks like that'll be over with quickly. But the I'm going with have... five. I don't think it'll be a complete sweep. I think maybe Los Angeles – well, okay, maybe not Los Angeles having a good game. I think there will be a game where Edmonton makes some mistakes because I think, you know, Edmonton is incredibly talented, but there's also holes within their system. There's a reason that McDavid doesn't have a cup, and it's because mm -hmm. the Edmonton Oilers are not built to perfection. I mean, no hockey team is, but there's definitely serious flaws. I think that will come up in at least – one game and if los angeles can capitalize it i think it'll at least go to game five um but yeah it's edmonton series yep um all right so dallas versus winnipeg we both have dallas um unless vegas wins uh that series um you know if dallas can be dallas i think dallas can go far in the postseason um and I do think out of Dallas, like just comparing Dallas and Winnipeg, Dallas is the better team. Um, just 
based on stats and looking at the season alone and just looking at the players. I think Dallas has a bit more depth than Winnipeg does. Um, I think, yeah, that's. Yeah, I'm, uh, you know, maybe I'm giving Dallas too much credit, but uh, oh, well, I've now got to write it out. That is true. That is true. Um, and uh, next one that you have is Nashville versus Edmonton. You've got Edmonton taking it. I think that makes sense. Um, I've got, I'm going to switch mine to Edmonton because after seeing the first game. No, I'll write it. I'll write it. I'll write it. Own it. Own, Own it. 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 Vancouver versus Los Angeles. Vancouver easily takes it. Um, as long as Demko comes back. Um, that's also the big thing that from Vancouver right now is Demko is out for the first round. Definitely. We don't know when he's coming back. So if Demko can come back, I think Vancouver can make it a deeper run into the playoffs. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that's going to be a big one on them. Uh, that is, that's some rough sauce. So they they dealt with him being a little hurt at the end of the year. I don't know if it's the same thing. Yeah. But, um, yeah, that's some rough sauce. And then for finals, you've got Dallas versus Edmonton. I have Dallas versus Vancouver. Uh, we both have Dallas winning. Um, we really just need Dallas to get it together for our brackets to work. Um, yeah, I again, as I said, Vegas just they look like the same gosh darn team from last year where they just and they're huge, they're all huge. Uh, so. Again, I the only reason I didn't go ahead, hockey princess. I will say Vegas is huge. They do look like the same team, and I don't want to give them too much credit because Corey Perry is on their roster. However, I do think if it comes to a Vegas Edmonton series, I think Edmonton can smoke them. I think so too. Um, no, I, Edmonton can definitely. Uh, take care of business on that end, but they would that won't happen until the finals, right? Uh, the I'm only reason I exactly, if that's your Western Conference finals, I think it's Edmonton. Yeah, the only reason I'm not going with Edmonton is because I believe I've gone with them the last two years and they've always disappointed me. So I figured I'd try something different. Makes sense. Uh, makes sense. So you've got Dallas versus the Rangers, with Dallas being your Stanley Cup champs. I uh, Dallas versus Florida, and I just want to see Florida raise the cup because um, they didn't last year, and I think they should this year. Um, so those are our brackets. Whether yeah, we're, so yeah. Krusty old guy might be completely out of it after one series. Same here. Um, whether we're right or wrong, it's going to be entertaining um, because, gosh darn it, playoff hockey is so much fun, um, and I miss it so much. Trying to see if there's a update from Florida before we wrap. Nope, it is in overtime currently. Um, so that is all that we really have this week. Uh, just beginning of the playoffs. Um, Rockford is going into the postseason. Uh, their game one is this upcoming Saturday, the 27th. They're playing the Grand Rapids Griffins. Uh, they do not have home ice advantage, or they do. No, they do, they do not. not. They do not. I was like, wait, Grand Rapids is number two. Uh, they play, if I'm not mistaken, it's a little weird. They play, they get game one. Yeah. Then it goes to Grand Rapids for two. For two. Then back to Rockford for one. And then if need be, Grand Rapids for, five. for game five, which I don't know why it's a five-game series. It's weird. Yeah. I, I guess to save money or whatever else, but oh well. But yeah, so Rockford is going into the postseason. Um, we'll definitely talk about that next week because uh, we'll have most, if not all, of round one done by the next time that we uh, record for next week's episode. So we'll have plenty of stuff to talk about for that. Um, 
most of the time right now is, you know, Rockford going to the playoffs and we'll talk, continue to talk about the rest of the NHL and the playoff matchups. Um, just as a reminder, just because Blackhawk hockey is over, does not mean that we are, uh, we'll still be bringing weekly. That's episodes. right. Every week in week in week out. Exactly. We're here still talking about hockey. That's just pathetic. All right. Uh, God, I need a life. Just as a reminder, make sure to hit like and subscribe on either Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or YouTube, however you watch or listen to us on a weekly basis. If you have any questions, comments, you want to be on an episode or one of our fun bonus episodes that we've had for the past couple of weeks, uh, send us a message on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Drop a comment if you're watching on YouTube. Uh, pick a social media platform. We're probably on it. That is all for this week, and we will talk at you guys again next week.